Well, hello, ladies and gentlemen, and uh, welcome to another Leica themed uh, upload. Now, I, for all intents and purposes, I'd uh, I'd finished uh, talking about my small Leica collection, but in one of my uploads, somebody asked, um, "How do you operate one of these cameras?" At least I think that's what they. I think that was the general gist of the question, and um, so I thought I'd do a quick vlog um, about uh, the finer points of operation. Basically, you know, they're, they're a very simple camera, and uh, the the most difficult thing, the most fiddly thing, I think, is is loading the film into one of these. Um, it's something that just requires a little bit of practice and it's something that's not particularly easy to do um when you're trying to show somebody else it, it's it's full of pitfalls and little errors and things like that and there are plenty of uh, uploads on youtube um on how to do this but i am going to attempt to show you how to do it so that the i sort of covered all the different aspects of using one of these cameras and uh, so hopefully uh, this is all going to work out reasonably well there might be a few gaps but um, that wouldn't be anything new as far as I'm concerned the first thing to notice uh, when you're loading one of these cameras and I'm sure if anybody's watched other uploads uh, they will be aware of this but you have to cut the leader of the film um more than you would do well you, the, the thing is what when you take a when you pull the film out of a conventional uh, 35 millimeter cassette you have about two inches of leader but that's insufficient if you happen to be loading um one of these uh screw thread likers it, it has to be roughly double that at uh, well as you can see either four inches or or 10 centimeters um, and I happen to have about my person for demonstration purposes and for practice purposes um, a film let's just put that out of the way for a moment uh, a film that I've already uh, pre-cut um, I just do it with scissors and I've done it a few times with this film and it's actually developed a little bit of a crease just there so I'm hoping I can get the crease back out again. I want to show you this though, because when you do cut the film, as I've said, this has just been cut with just a pair of scissors. Um, as you cut into the edge of the film, um, make sure that you don't cut through one of the sprocket holes. Okay, just make, I th think you can see that now. Just make sure that uh, the You've gone between one of the holes um, and you should be you should be okay so let's get the camera back into the scene uh, the reason I use this black material is simply that it tends to um, show the camera details a little bit better I think so uh, I'm not deliberately doing this for any sort of fashion statement, although it does look quite reasonable. Uh, it's just to to make the um, the contrast of the camera, uh, well, the contrast of the um, the whole thing that little bit uh, easier to see. This is a bit fiddly. I'm having to do this from behind um, my phone that's sitting on this in, in a small clamp in a small tripod, so I'm sort of peering around the edge so I hope you'll forgive me if it, uh, things don't quite go to plan because it's uh, I'm sort of doing this uh, this is a bit of a challenge if you like so anyway the first thing we need to do is to remove the take up spool and I will load that as you see it on the um, on the illustration on the camera so it's that way around and what we need to do is we need to take that spool and we need to slip uh, this leader here under that clip there 
on the spool hope you can see that so I'm going to turn the film round and then see if I can find the, the edge to the clip and which is there and I'm just going to push that through uh, so that the conveniently made arrow is well it's sort of illuminated the, the edge of the film is up against the edge of the sprocket and there you can see that the film's gone under there and we have a little arrow just to prove that this is the emulsion side of the film and then what we need to do then is we need to just turn the film over like so so the emulsion side is now facing the lens and I'm going to push a little bit of that back into the camera because what we need to do is to have just enough film out so that we can drop both the the cassette and the take up spool like so into the camera like that and I don't know whether you heard that but they don't force them in don't push them too hard just be firm so that they both seated properly and the reason you cut the leader to greater length is so that the that there's only one uh, set of sprocket holes um, which are the ones at the bottom uh, so, uh, actually having to engage uh, the, 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 the second lot of sprocket holes will engage as we wind the film through so now we can put the the base back and we can relock the the base and what I'm now going to do is cut the shutter press once And press twice um, and I think do it for a third time wind it through and now we need to just set the dial here you to zero that like so might be worth actually take make winding a third frame through um, another very important thing to remember with these cameras is that before you alter the shutter speed always make sure you have cocked the shutter that's really important if you can cause damage if you don't cock the shutter first so cock shutter first and then lift now that shutter's cocked so what I'm going to do I'm actually just going to put on a thousandth of a second and wind a few more frames through like so so let us imagine now that we have uh, run a complete film through so we're ready to unload the camera so what we do now is there's a little lever here and if I move that lever a little bit you can see it's got a for advance that's the position it's in when you're using the camera when you're taking photos to get the film out of the camera to rewind we move it right around there to that position the rewind position that will disengage the wind on mechanism and we can then rewind with our rewind knob here incidentally um, I should have pointed out that a lot of people once they've loaded the film in they tend to uh, put some tension onto the film um, so that they can uh, see if the film is winding through because this will start to turn in a anti-clockwise way uh, I should have pointed that out I apologize I didn't 
Uh, but again, they're saying there's quite a few uploads and you'll see a lot of people do this. Actually, what I'll do, I'll put it back into the operator uh, position um, and do that. And what they do is they, they will lift the lever up like that and to take the take the slack out of the film, pop it back. And then what they do is if the rewind lever is moving anti-clockwise, it shows that the film is running through the camera properly. So apologies for not doing that sooner. But anyway, let us imagine we've uh, shot the film and we want to rewind and get the film out of the camera. So we remove we move this lever here from the advanced position to the rewind position and we then simply lift up this rewind knob here and we wind in the direction of the arrow and that film is now you can hear it winding back into the cassette as soon as the tension goes off this I will stop rewinding it because I like my leaders to uh, stay out of the cassette because I do my own processing with black and white and it's it saves having to uh, take the cassette apart so I'm just going to slowly rewind that and there you go it's gone free so I know now the film uh, has disengaged from this side of the camera so now remove the uh, base again and simply remove the cassette with a sufficient amount of film still hanging out so I now put the base back on and lock lock it back into position and then I will immediately put the lever here back into the advanced position and then we can we're all set up to operate the camera again and I'm going to reiterate one point before you change the shutter speed always cock the shutter first that is important so I've cock the shutter and I can fire it quite nicely like so um, so that, that that if you don't remember anything else just remember that before you change the shutter speed cock the shutter and to change the shutter speed on these you actually have to lift the lever uh, the, the, the dial rather lift it a little bit there you go that's at a thousandth of a second and go from down to one sixtieth of a second but always cock the shutter before you change the speed and talking of shutter speeds this camera this one is a 3f i can't demonstrate it on the 3g because that's got a, a new film loaded into it but as with the 3a the 3b 3c 3f 3g they have this separate slow speed shutter dial here and in order to ac uh, activate that i need to put the top dial into that position there where i hope you can see that it's in the 30th to one second position and what that means is then I can then activate this slow speed dial here now this the some of the later ones have got this little release button here and you need to to actually move the dial you need to just unlock that so I put it now in that's a tenth of a second 
I can move it again now um, into the to 15th always cocking the shutter first and go through I'll go through the um, 120th and the 130th and I've got to lift it again now to I go to a quarter of a second so I think you can generally speaking you can see what I'm doing just lift this little lever up here and that allows you to move the dial I'll put it back to 130th and as I've said before you change shutter speed cock the shutter first I'll put that back into about a hundredth and so on so that's the uh, loading of the camera and the unloading of the camera um, when taking photographs I mean there are some people that use the Sony 16 method I at the moment I'm using a, an, old, um, a, an old Western Master 5 a light meter when I use my non metered cameras um, but if you can see here we have the viewfinder now the viewfinder on these is the the aperture there on the right on the left is the range finder this is what we use for focusing the camera and this is of the split image type and they're not the easiest thing to see especially if you're like me you wear you wear spectacles um there, there is a sort of a knack to using them sometimes i've found that if you angle the camera just slightly all of a sudden you'll see a much clearer uh, more contrastive view of the subject you're trying to focus on so for example um if, if you're out and about and you say you want to do i don't know take a photograph of uh I don't know what, what shall we say um, let's say a car or something like that or or a person or a tree or whatever um, you mm -hmm. look through the rangefinder you look at the subject that you want to get into focus and um, you operate the focus on the lens until the subject is um, merges into one so presumably let, let's say that the tree you look through the viewfinder you can see the outline of the tree but you can see a second outline so in other words you're sort of seeing well you're almost seeing two trees you adjust the focus of the lens until the two images merge into one and that means that that tree whatever you happen to be focusing on once it merges into one then it's in focus uh, and that's the way you use a rangefinder. A bit fiddly. They do take a little bit of getting used to. It's like everything else. The more you practice, the better you become. Also, there's a little lever here, which is for adjusting the diopter settings to your own personal um, eyesight. And that just moves like so. So you can customize the settings for your own personal to your or to your own personal choice. So we've dealt with um, the way to change the shutter speed. Now another important thing to do, and it might sound silly, but if you're if you if you're a, an SLR user and you buy a Leica and this goes for all the other rangefinder cameras for that matter uh, but it be a, a Canon um, a, an early uh, Nikon uh, sorry an early Nikon um, whatever a Fed Zorki and it might sound a silly thing to say but don't forget to take the lens cap off it sounds silly but it's so easy to do because you're not looking through the lens you're looking through up here 
and I'm sure there are plenty of people who have taken photographs of a, a, um, something and it's simply not there because I've done it um, so it, it's easily done so always remember to remove the lens cap now this particular lens is um, an Elmar f uh, 3.5 lens very 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 common lens um, this one I think this one dates from it's a post-war one um, but it goes for any of the these particular lenses I mean this this was if you like the, probably the most popular and commonest of the of the lights lenses and as with all of these collapsible lenses you must remember when you pull it out like so you must remember to turn it clockwise to lock it in position there you go that's locked make absolutely certain it's in lock position if you don't lock it then you're going to end up with a, a lot of blurred photographs and when you want to put the lens back into its normal uh, transit position if you like turn it to the left and push it back in and put the lens cap back on so I'll just repeat that lens cap off pull the lens out right out then turn it to the right and it's locked then if you put a little bit of pressure on that's not going anywhere um, and really that's what you do um, the aperture on these it's really quite awkward I always do it with my fingernail that's the, the little lever there is what you use to operate the iris and I just put my fingernail behind it do it like that just make sure you don't slip and your finger comes into contact with the front element just very carefully move it like so you'll only have this with this particular lens because the the uh, the summit are the summicron and the later f 2.8 l mars they have a conventional uh, aperture ring um, and you've also probably noticed this if you're new to like as this this is an infinity lock here and the lens at the moment is locked in infinity and if you're out there taking uh, landscape photographs where the, you're going to be on the infinity setting anyway uh, it's very handy because it, it, say, it, it, it prevents the lens from being knocked but to get it out of this setting you simply this this is this little button here is spring loaded you simply press press down and it comes out of the that position there so you can then focus uh, using this lever the easiest way to do it and then I always put it back into that lock position um, and really as far as the lens is concerned um, I think that's it so I'm going to um, retract the lens now and put the uh, hood back on not the hood sorry put the lens cap back on I've even managed to get the Leica in the right position so it's rather aesthetically pleasing so anyway uh, we've dealt with the loading and unloading um, we've dealt with changing the shutter speeds uh, setting the camera to your own personal eyesight is there anything else um, 
Well, I think that's it, isn't it? I've just gone 25 minutes doing this. I do hope you've... Uh, you any, Anybody who's new to these cameras or anybody who's thinking of buying one, I, I hope you'll find that of some use. I know that, um, obviously, anybody who's... Uh, using these cameras probably won't even be bothering to watch this uh, i've i've watched plenty of uh uploads like this um but i hope uh, it, the new owners or people who are thinking of buying one of these i hope you found that of of some use and you know basically this 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 goes for all of the Leica models from the the uh, 3A onwards. As far as the loading is concerned, it goes for all of these type of Leicas, uh, as far as I know. I can only go back to a 3A, because that's the oldest one I've got. But if you go to the, the 3 and, and the 2s uh, and so on, they, they're not going to have the, the uh, slow speed uh, um, control here separate slow speed dial I've never I've, I've never you ever used that um, you know my photography is just general photography and I'm just using I always just use the speeds on the top um, but I suppose if you were down in the coal cellar with a candle you might find this particular control of, uh, of great use anyway um, I think that's it I think I've covered everything uh, and if you've got any questions, I, I'll do my very best um, to to uh, answer them. Uh, anyway, I hope you've enjoyed that. I've rather enjoyed making that, making the uh, this particular load. And as I've said, if you forget it all, then the most important thing is cock the shutter before you change your shutter speed so that's all for me now i'll see you all soon and thanks for watching bye now